Today in Ham Radio q and I take a look at the Rig Expert Stick 230 Antenna Analyzer. Is this something you should add to your portable HF kit? Well, keep watching to find out. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9DBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community. So if this is your first time here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, check out our Patreon page. It's where you'll gain access to exclusive content and helps us keep producing more and new exciting stuff. Well, I'm no stranger to antenna analyzers. I've been using them for close to 20 years, ever since I purchased an MFJ259, and up until recently, I replaced it with my Rig Expert AA600 Professional Meter. The AA600 is an excellent product, but, you know, it along with the MFJ meter are bulky, so I wanted something a little more compact for portable use. Enter the Rig Expert Stick 230. The stick, as Rig Expert describes it, is a small, handy, and powerful vector network analyzer designed for measuring the most useful parameters of cable and antenna systems in the range of 100 kilohertz to 230 megahertz. I, I recently purchased this Stick 230 analyzer and have been using it for about a month, which with that, I've gotten pretty good feeling of its capabilities and its shortcomings. We'll talk about what I like and don't like about the stick in a bit, but first I'll run down its specifications and give a demonstration on its use on a couple different antennas. Looking at the box, it's prominently marked that the Rig Expert stick is made in the Ukraine, so this isn't a piece of Chinese technology. When I ordered the stick, I thought it would be a bit smaller, but I think the size is actually about right. It's 7.3 by 1.6 by 1.3 inches and weighs about 6.5 ounces. Ergonomically, it fits quite well in the hand and it doesn't feel too light or too heavy. Uh, there's a rubber cap to protect the UHF connector, but I'm sure I'm going to lose that piece soon enough. The specs on the Rig Expert Stick 230 are as follows. Frequency range of 0.1 to 230 megahertz with 1 kilohertz resolution. It measures SWR or standing wave ratio, return loss, X, Z and L, C, magnitude, and phase angle at a single frequency. A 100 point graphical uh, SWR graph. It's got a UHF connector, otherwise known as an SO239, rechargeable 3.7 volt lithium ion battery, and a USB socket for charging and PC connection. It's also got Bluetooth connection for the Antscope app, which is available on iPhone or Android, and a 200 by 200 pixel monochrome e-paper display. The thing that really impressed me about the stick is the display. When I first opened the box, I thought there was a sticker demonstrating the display, but nope, peeling it off, the protective plastic just shows the unit's e-paper display. This is the same type of display that's used in e-readers, you know, like the Amazon Kindle. These high contrast monochrome displays are known for their power saving features, as no power is required to maintain an image on the screen. Plus, the high contrast screen is very easy to read in bright sunlight, which is a definite plus for this analyzer. Pressing the power button, you feel a slight buzz instead of beeping to indicate a button press. The unit vibrates slightly, much like your phone, for a quiet sensory feel during its operation. Uh, the display does have a habit of blinking when the display changes, but this is normal and is really an artifact of the e-paper display. The box does not come with instructions, but you do get a one-page sheet of paper that tells you the basic operation of the stick. And basically, it tells you to connect an antenna and press the multi-button. This, this will sweep the antenna and give you a rating of its resonant frequencies. So I hooked it up to the 6-meter J-pole that's outside my house, and it told me the antenna was resonant at 52.49 megahertz, which is right on as, yeah, that's what, that's, what I tuned it for at 52.5 megahertz. It also has a star system to rate your antennas. Five stars is resonant, three stars it's under 1.3 to one, and uh, one star means, you know, it's between two to three to one. So, you know, it's really a kind of a novel visualiz visualization. And if your two stars are above, you'll know the antenna should work well, you know, without a tuner. But the multi-setting is really handy for multi-band antennas as it will rate the performance for multiple bands or help you find the resonant frequency of an unknown antenna. For a demonstration, I set up the Chameleon Empath 2 vertical antenna in my backyard 
Uh, this is a non-resonant multi-band antenna that uses a 5 to 1 transformer and gives an acceptable match on the amateur bands and other frequencies. In most cases, the SWR will be 3 to 1 or less and you can then finish the match with an antenna tuner. Plugging the stick into the MPAS2 and pressing the multi-button gives me 13 different matches under 3 to 1 in the entire spectrum of HF and VHF uh, bands, uh, rating each one with its star system. Now this isn't necessarily an indicator of the performance, but I do, see, I do see that the best match is on the 20 meter band. And with a tuner, I can use this antenna on any number of other bands. So the multi-feature is a neat little trick to find resonance on your multiple band antennas. But what do the other features do? Uh, the display is broken into four functions, single, multi, ham, and free. The top two, single and multi, display the results in a number format and the bottom two, ham and free, display graphical charge. The single function is probably the most useful if you're looking to tune an antenna. It will report the, it will report the working frequency, SWR value, and return loss. And you can also get the R, the re, which is reactive, and X, which is the resistive values, and inductance and capacitive values by scrolling on to the following pages. But say I want to tune the antenna like my Wolf River Coil Silver Bullet 1000. I'll set up the antenna and its counterpoise and then connect the analyzer. But I need to pick an operating frequency. So to, I set the unit to the single mode and then long press the select button, which is the little triangle, to set the frequency. Frequency is changed by using the arrows to move the cursor and the plus and minus buttons to change the values. Then I press select again and it will actively scan and display the SWR. As I move the tap on the coil, I can see the changes on the display. Soon I'm able to find a resonance spot and I can press the stop button to quit scanning. Using the arrows, I scroll through the pages and uh, view the other values for the antennas, such as the reactance and the resistance, the inductance and the capacitance. But numbers are one thing. Sometimes it's better to visualize an antenna's performance on a chart. That's where the ham and the free features come in handy. The ham feature, much like multi-feature, lets you view the performance of the antenna on preset amateur radio bands. But instead of a number, you'll see a chart with the antenna plotted out for the, each band. If the antenna is resonant on that band, you know, you're going to see the dip on the chart. Otherwise, the stick's going to tell you uh, it's non-resonant or what frequency nearest the band the antenna resonates at. Pressing the arrow keys lets you switch up and down the bands. Pressing plus or minus will toggle the unit into free mode, which allows you to explore the chart a bit. In the free mode, you can shift the center frequency and the range of the chart. The plus and the minus buttons change the frequency range and the arrow buttons change the center frequency of the chart. You'll see the antenna's plot on the chart in relation to its center frequency. If you want another scan of the antenna, you can press the select button to sweep it again. But the display may not tell you the whole story, so the stick has Bluetooth connections, so you can control it with the Antscope software available for iPhone and Android. Antscope allows you to change the frequency, scan the antenna, view the results as an SWR graph Smith chart, or table of parameters. You can't save the scans with the AppScope Antscope app, but you can make a screenshot on your phone if you want to record the values. Uh, the stick also has a USB-C connection, so you can hook it up to a PC and use the desktop version of Antscope for more analysis. So the stick is more than really just an antenna analyzer, but instead, you know, it's a full-featured ve vector network analyzer. In finishing up my review of the Rig Expert Stick 230, let's talk about a little bit about the good and the bad of this compact antenna analyzer. First off, the good. Ergonomic de design. It fits in the hand very well. It doesn't roll off the table when you set it down. I like how it vibrates instead of beeping. It's got long battery life. The specs say 16 hours on a charge, and I've yet to wear down the lithium ion battery in the month I've been using it. It's relatively easy to use. At first I was a bit dismayed when uh, a single sheet of paper with a single sheet of instructions, but in using the meter, I found it to be pretty user friendly and just exploring with it has been the best way to learn how to use it. And that e-paper display. I love the high contrast display and wish Rig Expert used it on their other units. Now for the bad. Now let's start off with the inconsistent user interface. 
Okay, in single mode, you use the plus and the minus buttons to change frequency, but in free mode, you use the arrow buttons to change frequency. This causes me grief to no end as I go into free mode and want to change uh, the frequency range of the chart and end up messing my center frequency up. Uh, I've heard some that the uh, apps could be buggy. You know, I tested the iPhone version of Anscope and it appeared to work well for me, but I've seen online reports that the Android version might have bugs in it. I don't know if that's the case or not, but Rig Expert tends to be responsive to fixing problems. So, well, we hopefully that'll be corrected soon. And then the inability to save scans. Other Rig Expert meters let you save your scans for later analysis in Anscope. This isn't the case with the stick. It doesn't have a memory feature. Let's talk a little bit about price. The Stick 230 retails for about $300. I think I paid about $289 for mine. Street price is a bit less. It's the same as their AA55 handheld meter. Now I admit, Rig Expert devices aren't cheap. They are professional level tools and they pack a lot of features into their devices. I guess I would have liked to see you know, it a, a bit, uh, bit more competitively priced. Final word on the Rig Expert Stick A230. Uh, well, I'm impressed with the build level of this product, its features and capabilities. I purchased this unit to carry with me out in the field, and I imagine you know the ideal user is going to be a person wanting an analyzer to tune the HF vertical antennas like you know, that Wolf River coil, the super antenna, or any number of the magnetic loops that are out on the market. The stick is a definite upgrade from carrying a full-sized analyzer and is much easier and convenient than those inexpensive nano VNA products. I don't feel like I'm giving anything up by um, having the stick in my portable kit rather than a full featured analyzer. But the, the question is, is it for everyone? Yeah, probably not. If I was starting out and I wanted an analyzer for an antenna design and construction, yeah, I, I wouldn't pick this as my first choice, but rather maybe their A855 or A230, especially for the convenience of a bigger display and the ability to save scans. But for field use, you know, this is really an excellent choice. Then again, you know, you can usually get by without an analyzer in the field, you know, but using one makes setup quicker. So I appreciate that convenience it offers. I'm happy with this performance. And other than the user interface quirks, you know, that I discovered, I found that it's quite easy to use and I'll continue to use it. So there you go. Do you have any questions or comments on the Rig Expert Stick 230 antenna analyzer? Please leave them in the comments below. I'll follow up on the conversation. Yeah, I'll maybe even pull out a few for my next Your Questions Answered video. But for more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. So support us on Patreon and unlock a bevy of exclusive content. Give us that thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's your first time, especially if it's your first time here. It's your best way to be notified when a new video is released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, DB9VVR. Have a great day and 73.